This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hey everyone, and welcome to this episode of Hack 5. My name is Shannon Morris, and that's Derek Kitchen. He's not here this week again. He's gone. He's down at South by Southwest. He's actually hanging out down there for like 24 hours, and I'm so jealous. I want to go to South by Southwest. I've never been. But anyway, we have Greg joining me this week to take his place again because Greg's an amazing co-host. If you guys enjoy seeing Greg, let me know in the, the feedback or you can tweet me at hack 5 at snubs because I would love to see how much everybody feels uh, love towards Greg. He's very special to us. So not much to throw to this week other than we do have something really cool happening here in about two weeks. Uh, we're having the Buzz Out Loud 10 year reunion show. It's going to be hosted pretty much by your favorite people, Tom, Molly, Veronica, and Jason. They're all gonna be here. And we're also going to be throwing it here at the Hack 5 Warehouse. So we're gonna have a little get together with everybody. So it's on May 29th, 2015, and it's gonna start at 12.30 local time here. So uh, change that to whatever your time might be for wherever you live. It doesn't matter whether you're from the Cretaceous age or the digital age, when that killer idea hits you, you need to snag a domain name and web hosting fast. And with Domain.com's quick domain discovery system and easy checkout process, you'll have your website up and running in no time. I like Domain.com because they're super affordable, they're reliable, and they're easy to use. Plus, Domain.com's active social media presence, at Domain.com on Twitter, and their great support make it a really fun place to do business. The guys over at Domain.com are huge fans of Hack5, and they want to hook you up, you personally. Use the coupon code HACK5 at checkout and get an extra 15% off. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. This week I decided to take a step back from all the Arduino mods that I've been doing, even though it's super, super fun, but it's also very complicated. So it's nice to take a break now and then. Well, Darren brought up this question to me. So we have a whole bunch of printers here and they're all connected on the network, but we wanted to set up Google Cloud Print with a server on a printer but not have to keep a PC on all the time because in order to have Google Cloud Print running, you have to keep its owner printer or its owner PC on all the time for others to access it through that PC. So we didn't really want to deal with all that electricity and all those issues. So he was like, well, can we connect this through a Raspberry Pi? And I was like, sure, of course we can. Well, apparently you can. There's actually an awesome tutorial by How to Geek. It's called How to Turn a Raspberry Pi into a Google Cloud Print Server. So I decided to do this on my own and I ran into a few complications with it. So I figured I would go through it and just share some of my experiences with you guys so you can set it up on your own machines and on your own network. So first off, of course, we're doing Raspberry Pi. So you do have to download the Raspi and Wheezy image. You just stick it onto an SD card with Win32 Disk Imager, power up your Pi, and then you give your Pi all sorts of SD card space and additional storage, because you'll probably need that. You also want to enable SSH when you first boot up your Raspberry Pi, which I can't go through since I already set that up. And then you would just want to boot into the desktop, make any changes that you want to specifically for your own profile, and you're good to go. Of course, you do need internet for this because it's supposed to be on the network, and you want to do a couple of little simple scripts, sudo apt-get upgrade and sudo apt-get update. And then we want to do this thing where we add a program called CUPS. So CUPS is for any kind of Linux, Unix operating systems. It's called the Common Unix Printing System, aka CUPS. So to install this, it's very simple, sudo apt-get install CUPS, and then you want to create a new user once it's finally installed. If you're using a Raspberry Pi, it does take a long time, so just go grab a soda or something and wait for it to install. Once you have it set up, and I'll show you this on my Raspberry Pi, you do have to put in a couple of commands. So the first one is going to be sudo user mods or modifying the users tac a tac capital g tac capital g i hate this keyboard lp admin and then pi so pi lp admin that's going to be our group and our user for this raspberry pi that we're going to be connecting to a printer once you have that done, you want to actually edit a config file. So this one is going to be found in slash etsy slash cups slash cupssd.conf or c-o-n-f. And in order to get into that, you'll do a second command. This is going to be sudo nano. And nano is how you're going to be able to edit it. 
Etsy slash cups slash cups d dot conf. When you open that, you'll get this lovely little material here. So there are a couple of different things that you need to edit here. Uh, first off, you want to only listen for connections from the local machine. So you want to scroll down and find that line. Here it is. Listen localhost colon 631 port 631. You want to edit that little part right there. So you add port 631. 631 is going to be what's actually the printer. So you'll be able to find the printer on your network. After that, there's just a couple of other things you want to add in. You want to scroll down a little bit farther and find uh, location restrict access to the server. So let's scroll down. There we go. All right, so restrict access to the server. We're going to add order allow uh, comma deny under allow at local order allow comma deny again and then under what is this one restrict access to configuration file order allow comma deny again and allow at local and scroll down a little bit farther and the last one you want to look for is auth type default require user at system so we find that one oh it's up here and we also out, order allow comma deny as along with allow at local. Now, once you've done that, you also want to restrict the access to the configuration files and add in the order allow comma deny allow at local and save exit and you're done with that. So in order for me to get out of here, I'm just gonna hit control X because I've already saved everything and then we're back at our regular screen. Now, in order to get into CUPS from other computers, you're going to know, need to know the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You can just find that with ifconfig on your Raspberry Pi, and then it'll give you whatever your INET address is. So when you open Pi on a different computer, it's going to look like this. So mine is 10.73.31.208 colon 631. There's that port again, 631, and this is CUPS. This will give you administration levels to all the printers and all the jobs that are currently happening on your network from your Linux computer. So first off, we go to administration and we want to add different computers. So you go through the process of adding a computer. You basically want to look for your specific uh, printer, whatever it might be. In my case, we added a local printer and then put in the IP address of our local printer. After that, you want to add the driver and add the manufacturer of your printer and then just click OK and it should come out just fine. I also noticed if you're using an HP printer, you might run into an issue with uh, Linux machines because it requires additional drivers. Luckily, HP does have those drivers available, and I'll put the link in the show notes for that. But unfortunately, with the Raspberry Pi, you may run into memory issues or storage issues with that actual Pi and the SD card. So I wasn't able to get our HP running on here, but I was able to get our thermal printer for the hack shop running on here just fine. So once I had that actually installed, I can go into printers, and you'll notice all the HP ones that I was testing on here. But down at the bottom, we have Zebra 2, and this is the one that I'm going to be using for my segment. So now that I have my printer set up, I can go ahead and go into Google Cloud Print and install Chromium. So this also involves the Raspberry Pi, so we'll go back there. Once you install Chromium, and it's just a very simple sudo apt-get install chromium-browser, you'll be able to access all your different printers on your Chromium browser. So we're going to go into the settings, and it takes just a moment to load since it's very slow. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to where we have advanced settings. Click on advanced settings and scroll down to where you see Google Cloud Print. Now down here, right now it says disconnected printers, as you can see, disconnect printers, and also manage print settings. Now when you first start this up, you'll be actually able to see uh, connect printers instead of disconnect printers. So you wanna connect all your different printers, and it's just a very simple thing where you read through what it says on the website, and it'll bring you to this page where you see all the different printers that you currently have set up on your Raspberry Pi to print through Google Cloud Print. Now now my Zebra should be able to uh, print from any computer in the area. So let's see if it works. I'm going to go over to my test email address, which I use for all my test stuff, and I'm going to print 
And you'll notice when you change your printers, it's going to show up down here under Google Cloud Print. So I'm going to choose Zebra 2. I'm going to hit Print. And this should take about 12 seconds for it to actually connect to the printer and print out. Now you may run into a couple of issues as well if you're trying to print directly from your Raspberry Pi. Did you hear that printer? My printer printed. So it's not set up correctly on the website, but my thermal printer is working and it printed out my email address. Yay! I'm so excited about this. So lastly, I did want to show you one more thing on the Raspberry Pi. If we come back over here, I noticed that a couple of times when I was trying to print to the Zebra, it wouldn't work through the actual GUI. So I actually had to go over to my terminal and then I had to print out straight from the terminal. So I had this test file that I wanted to print out. And in order to do that, I had to go over to my, let's see, I think it was on my desktop. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to type in LPR, TAC P for print, Zebra, oops, whoa, European keyboard, so confusing. Zebra, and then test.txt. Since it didn't work in the GUI, I found out this command would actually print it in about 12 seconds or so, I'll actually get it to print out. So I, I thought that was a nice little actual tip that I was able to share with you guys since I ran into that problem, and who knows, you might too. Now lastly, if you do want to share your Google Cloud Print printer with other ones, you will need to walk through the tutorial from Google's website. I'll also share that. It, it looks like this, where you can share individual email addresses, so you don't have to be logged into the same exact account every single time you want to print something from that Google Cloud printer. And luckily, it will work for you. Uh, that's about it. Of course, if you guys have questions about this, I'll have the links in the show notes, and you can email me feedback at hack5.org. I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Patrick to find out what's happening with Tech Thing. Hmm. Hey everybody, Patrick here from Tech Things, Shannon's other show. We got some good stuff coming up. How to make an older PC run faster. How long will the data last in your hard drive? What does Shannon think about the new Pebble watches? And quite a bit more. Go check it out please at techthing.com. I think Greg is done with the show today. He's pretty much had it. He's fed up. He doesn't like being here on the set with me. I don't blame him. Sorry, dude. All right, so that about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. I hope you liked it. If you didn't, or if you just want to compliment all the awesome things we've been doing with Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, and drones, feedback at hack5.org, hak5.org slash follow to find all of our social networks and figure out what the heck we're doing every single day and find out when Darren's not going to be here on the set since he's down at South by Southwest. <laughs> And of course, don't forget uh, bit.ly slash capital B, capital O, capital L reunion for the Buzz Out Loud 10 year later big show reunion over here at the Hack 5 warehouse. We hope that you guys can join us for that. It's going to be so much fun. We're super excited and can't wait. Um, and lastly, of course, if you want to support us directly, hakshop.com. That's where we sell all of our Wi-Fi pineapples and all the cool new bags that we have for all your hacker items. So definitely check it out. I love the new hacker bag. I took it to East Bay Bike Party the other night where you just ride around for hours around this entire loop around the entire East Bay. It was so fun and the bag was perfect for that. So I don't know, you might get some use out of it. So I think that's about it. I'm Shannon Morris, that was Greg, Darren Kitchens that way, and we'll see you next time. Trust your Technolust. And three, two, excuse me. And three, two, shut up. Oh, it smells like tuna. I had tuna for lunch.